Today, uh, with the services that we have going on, I won't be too long up here. Um, we will be in Luke chapter 22 today. <clears throat> Luke chapter 22, verses 15 through 18. Luke chapter 22, verses 15 through 18. And I'm going to try to stick to my notes here. Otherwise, y'all know how I get going sometimes. I don't want to be up here for half an hour. So excuse me if I look what uh, my, my uh, homiletics teacher called a chicken preacher, where you're kind of looking at your notes and doing like this. So I'm going to try to stick to this so that I don't uh, go off and start, you know, uh, too much. So. Verse 15, it says, Luke twenty two fifteen 15 says, Then he said to them, With fervent desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Let's pray. God in heaven, thank you so much again for this time that we have here that for communion and for this baptism. We ask and pray, God, today for your Holy Spirit to guide and lead us, uh, open our hearts to hear the message. We pray, God, that Jesus would be lifted up now. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Jesus says in verse 16, I tell you, I will not eat again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. This word until is a little word with a lot of meaning in this passage. We have to understand that Jesus was teaching his disciples that this would be the last Passover, meaningful Passover that they would do together. There would be no more sacrifices necessary because his sacrifice was only hours away and the Passover feast and the system of ceremonies, the system of blood and animal sacrifices would all be fulfilled in the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 11 and 12 tells us, quote, with his own blood, he entered the most holy place that is in heaven once for all. No more animal sacrifices were needed. But we also have to understand that it would be extremely difficult for a Jew to celebrate his religion and indeed his culture without the Passover ceremony. This was a central celebration For God's people at that time. This was a central part of their culture and their religion for the Jews. This Passover ceremony. But now he directed the attention of the disciples to the bread and the fruit of the vine. This would now be the central celebration for the people of God. So the Passover, which God prescribed for his people for so many generations, the Passover came to an end. And now the attention of God's people, the, the high point of their celebration would now be the bread and the wine. So let me ask you a question. If we see that the last Passover was here in our passage today, that this was the last Passover meal, then when will the last communion service actually be? When when are we going to have the last communion service? Doesn't this also come to an end at some point? When will the Last Supper take place? Well, let me tell you, it's it's going to take place just before Jesus comes. Isn't that right? The last communion service happens just before the second coming of Jesus Christ. So when Jesus comes, the last communion you took would be the last one. And then after that, the Bible tells us about the wedding supper of the Lamb. That's the next meal. So having said this, wouldn't it be wonderful 
If this was the last communion service that we ever have on this earth, wouldn't that be wonderful? That would mean Jesus has come. That would mean Jesus has returned. That would mean Jesus that is here and now that our next meal is going to be the wedding supper of the Lamb. Church, we should be praying that this is the last communion service we ever have to do on this earth. Each time we celebrate this service, we should hope and pray it is the last one we ever have to celebrate before we have that meal with Jesus in heaven. Are you ready for that? Are we ready for that? Are we ready for this to be the last one? I have a quote here from uh, Norman Gully from uh, Systematic Theology. He says... In volume four, he says, just as the Passover was superseded by the Lord's Supper, so the Lord's Supper will be superseded by the wedding supper of the Lamb. Revelation 19.9. These three meals, talking about the Passover, communion, and the wedding supper of the Lamb, these three meals have one thing in common. They celebrate Christ's deliverance of his people through the Red Sea, at Calvary, and at the second coming of Christ. All all of these meals, they celebrate Christ's deliverance from God's people out of Egypt coming into the promised land. God's people were delivered there on Calvary as Jesus died for their sins, that by faith they might be saved. And God delivers His people when he comes the second time to save them out of their troubles, to save them from this world. These three meals are Calvary-centered. These three meals are Calvary-centered. And that's the whole point of the communion service. Communion invites us to rise above this world, to the world made new that God is preparing for us. Communion invites us to rejoice in God's past present, and future deliverance that is made possible by the cross. And I don't know about you, but as I look around at what's happening in the world today, I realize how utterly hopeless the world system is to fix anything. Our government doesn't have the answers. Today, we are clearly having to deal with disease and suffering in front of our eyes and around the world. Political tensions in this country are at an all-time high, and Americans are hating each other over their political views and candidates, aren't they? Fires, hurricanes, viruses are causing destruction and fear around this nation and around the world. Look at the world that we live in. The emblems before us today are Jesus' reminder to us to wait faithfully and witness faithfully till he comes again. Political leaders or, or ideals are not our Savior. Never has been, never will be. Vaccines for the virus are not our Savior. Never have been, never will be. A change in our circumstances are not going to save us. Never have, never will. There is only one Savior that's going to deliver us from all of these things. And His name is Jesus Christ. And this communion service reminds us of that today. Communion points to Him as our Savior and our deliverer. I'd like to read this quote here as well from the book Desire of Ages, page 660. She says, The love of Jesus with its constraining power is to be kept fresh in our memory. Christ has instituted this service, talking about communion, that it may speak to our senses of the love of God that has been expressed On our behalf. 
and nothing less than the death of Christ could make his love effective for us. It is only because of his death that we can look with joy to his second coming. His sacrifice is the center of our hope. Upon this, we must fix our faith. Amen? His sacrifice is the center of our hope. Upon this, we must fix our faith. Church, what is your faith fixed on today? What is your faith fixed on today? God wants to receive wants us to receive spiritual strength and encouragement from the communion service today. He wants us to recommit our lives to God today. I believe that it is possible to have a renewed and stronger bond with God every time we take communion. That's how special communion is supposed to be. The focus should not be on the bread and the wine, how it looks, how it tastes, how it smells, how familiar it is, the package, the process. Those things should not be our focus. The focus is on our crucified Savior. That's what we should look to today. I'm encouraging us today to celebrate this communion service as if it were our last one. What if this was the last communion service and Jesus were to come back before we did it again? Think about it that way. Let's fix our faith upon his sacrifice. And as we become sure of the deliverance of God that he has provided for us, let's pray. God in heaven, thank you so much for this promise and for your deliverance. And today we partake of this communion service with hopeful expectation of that great deliverance. God, um, what a wonderful thing if this would be our last one, because then Jesus would have come back. But we wait faithfully, God, for your timing. God, we ask your blessing upon this service today, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, uh, I want to read here uh, and look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and it says here in verse 23, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he, took, in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. And verse 28, But let a man examine himself and let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. So today, church, as was mentioned in the message today, that Jesus is inviting us to look to the past, to look inside and the present, to examine our own hearts, and also to look forward to the second coming of Christ. And as critical as people are of religion and the Bible and the second coming of Christ, when you do this communion service, you are telling people publicly I believe in the second coming. I believe in Calvary. I believe in everything in the past that God has said and done that the Bible is true. So when we take this communion service, we're proclaiming all of those things to the onlooking world. So it's important that we stay faithful in taking our communion service. Amen? At this time, I'll ask uh, Elder Bernard if he'll have a blessing over the bread. Heavenly Father, we are thankful for this opportunity to remember the amazing sacrifice of Jesus Christ on our behalf. And we take the symbol of the bread 
just as Christ came down from heaven as the bread of life, and just as a morsel of food is becomes a part of our body, Lord, may his life, his sacrifice, his victory, his salvation become a part of our life. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now at this time, I also have a prayer over the Jews. God in heaven, we thank you so much, Lord. In this simple way, we can be reminded of the blood that was shed. Salvation is free to us by faith. We reach out and we accept this redemption. But to Jesus, it was not free. It cost him his life. It cost him his blood. And he willingly and joyfully surrendered it all so that we could be with you, God, forever. We thank you so much, God. And we proclaim today the death of Jesus Christ his resurrection, and his soon return as we partake today. God, may this change us, influence us, and the world around us. Please take our feeble offering, our our lowly sacrifice, God, of ourselves. And as we take this communion and we proclaim this truth, uh, that it would spill out, the blessings of communion would spill out of our lives to other people as well, too. May they see the hope that we have in Jesus. We are reminded of this today, and we thank you. We ask your blessing upon uh, this wine today, this juice today. In Jesus' name, amen. On the same night, he took the cup and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, drink, this is my blood which is shed for you. Praise God, amen.